In this week's video, we'll review historical and present day data to help us answer the question, rate cuts, a death knell for stocks or a new beginning? We'll start with a tweet from Thomas Lee that showed the date of the first Fed rate cut in a new cycle dating back to 1971 and made the distinction between periods where the economy was already in a recession and periods where the economy was still expanding. As we covered in detail in last week's video, it's difficult to make the argument in June of 2019 that we are already in a recession. Therefore, we'll begin our analysis with the non-recessionary cases. The Federal Reserve cut rates for the first time on January 13th, 1971. What happened next in the stock market? The S&P 500 tacked on roughly 30% over the next two years. 1984, the first cut came on October 2nd. Stocks consolidated for a few months, but eventually really good things happened. A first cut came on October 19th, 1987, and stocks went on a very impressive run. The Fed took out the scissors on July 6th, 1989, and from a long-term perspective, good things happened in the S&P 500 index. In 1995, the first cut in a new cycle came on July 6th, and really good things happened in the short run, intermediate run, and long run. September 29th, 1998, what happened next? The answer, impressive gains. Let's summarize the non-recessionary cases using a table. Date of the first cut here in this column, S&P 500 performance looking out 30 days after the first cut all the way out to two full years. For the most part, good things happened over all time frames, longer term after two years. Six out of six cases, the market was higher. The average gain was roughly 41%. And the median gain, which speaks to consistency, was also 41%. How do the numbers look if we move from the date of the first cut to the next major peak in the stock market. Date of the first cut here, the average gain was 218% in the S&P 500, median coming in around 140. The average rally lasted 5.7 years, the median 3.78. Thomas Lee has some other interesting results that you can find on his Twitter feed. Now let's expand our analysis by looking at all 11 cases. And since the data is readily available, allowing for an apples to apples comparison, let's leverage a concept that we used in last week's video. This is the unemployment rate. This is a monthly chart. You can see the 1990, 1991 recession is in this basic area. Here, you can see the unemployment rate shot above the upper Bollinger Band and the center line turned up. Similar situation 2001. Unemployment rate closes above the upper Bollinger Band, center line turns up. 2007, 2009, similar situation. We get a close above the upper Bollinger Band and the center line turns up. In the slides that follow, we'll be looking at all 11 cases using the date of the first Fed rate cut. And to take bias out of the equation, we've removed the dates from these charts here, which allows us to take the present day chart using all of the data that we have in June of 2019 and compare it to all 11 historical cases. Remember, this is the basic look that we want to avoid. Unemployment rate shooting above the upper Bollinger Band, center line turning up. You can see in the present day, we really don't have anything like that. If we quickly compare 
2019 to the historical charts, we can see this chart here really doesn't look anything like the present day. Close above the upper Bollinger Band, center line turning up. Close well above the upper Bollinger Band, center line turning up. In this case, it's already happened, and then we start consolidation above a rising center line. This doesn't look anything like this, with this being the 2019 chart. These cases are somewhat similar. Unlike the present day, the unemployment rate is above the center line and the center line is flattening out. Some similarities, some differences. And the same thing can be said for this chart here on the right. Thus far, we've compared the present day to five of the 11 historical cases. Before we review the remaining six, let's keep in mind what the present day chart looks like and if we look for similarities and differences between the present day and the remaining six cases and place the 2019 look here at the top of the chart, pretty easy to say this case looks nothing like the present day. These two cases share a lot with the present day. Unemployment rate is near the lower Bollinger Band in both cases, well below a center line that's declining below a center line that's declining. We can say the same thing for this chart here. Pretty good match, pretty good match. Everything we just said about those two charts, for the most part, applies to this chart here. In these cases on the lower right, don't look as good as the green box cases, but they do have a lot of similar characteristics relative to the present day. If we consider all 11 historical cases relative to 2019 and rank them from most similar to the present day to least similar to the present day, it will allow us to get a little bit better feel from a data perspective relative to how does 2019 compare relative to this column here in the historical cases that featured the first Fed rate cut. Here are the rankings for the second set. If we go back to the first set, this case really doesn't look anything like the present day, doesn't look anything like the present day, shares very little with the present day. These two cases here in orange are somewhat of a mixed bag. We have a declining upper Bollinger Band similar to the present day. Price has not reached the upper Bollinger Band, similar to the present day, but we have cleared the center line, and in both cases, the center line looks like it's flattening out, which is different relative to the present day, hence why their rankings fall in the middle of the pack. Let's add the rankings to our table and also add in another column that tells us whether or not the unemployment rate is above the Bollinger Band center line. If we sort the table using the chart rankings on the far left, we can see the most similar cases relative to the present day are 1987, 1989, 1984, 1995, and 1998. Even though the 1971 case has a no in the recession column, the unemployment rate chart didn't look anything like the present day. Thus, let's take a quick look at the results moving forward in the S&P 500 relative to the five cases that are most similar to 2019. Very similar to the first pass, returns improve a little bit, but for the most part in every single case, really good things happen looking out 30 days to two years. If we take this table with the most similar cases and walk forward to the next major S&P 500 peak following the first rate cut, the returns improve and the duration of the rally in years also improves. The average bumps up to 6.4 years and the median bumps to 4.7, telling us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes if the Fed decides to cut rates in 2019 as the market expects.
And it's extremely important to note what we talked about last week. We are not using the unemployment rate to forecast anything. You're simply using the data to monitor the present day health of the economy. Right now, the present day chart has a more favorable look than this case, this case, and this case. And the same thing can be said for the other recession cases that we've covered. As a reference point, let's put the dates back on these charts. 2019 here, 1974, 1980, 1981. They really don't look anything like the present day. Discernible differences between 2001, 2007, and the present day. Our concerns would increase if this chart starts to morph into a look like this or this. And more importantly, our concerns would increase if this chart morphs into something like this, this, or this. If we put the dates back on these six cases, 1971 looks nothing like the present day. 1984, similar to the present day. 1987, similar to the present day. Somewhat of a mixed bag here, but 1989 and 1998 look a lot more like the present day relative to the recessionary cases. Nothing really new on the chart of the yield curve if we update it. As we noted last week, this portion of the yield curve has not been inverted since 2007. And yes, in the present day, we can say the yield curve is about to invert, but we could have said the exact same thing. The yield curve is about to invert in June of 1995. One of the cases that we just covered was the date of a first rate cut in early July of 1995, telling us the yield curve is another tool that says 1995 shares some things with 2019. And in the 1995 case, after the Fed cut rates, on July 6, 1995, the stock market gained 175% and rallied for almost five years. Fed cut rates on October 2nd, 1984, one of our 11 cases. October of 1984 also appeared in a recent analysis where the 100 day retakes the 200 day. Something that recently happened in 2019. After that point in 1984, really good things happened. The 1984 case also appeared in one of our MACD studies, another way to tie 1984 to 2019. The Fed cut rates for the first time on October 2nd, 1984, and on September 29th, 1998. Very similar periods showed up in our fifth consecutive monthly close above the center line in a recent analysis that we covered in a video. Once again, taking something from the present day, something that just happened in the present day, tying it to 1984 and 1998. It's also noteworthy that the chart of the unemployment rate in 1984, very, very similar to the present day, the chart of the unemployment rate in 1998, very similar to the present day. 2018, 2019, the S&P 500 made a stand at an upward sloping 200 week moving average. And as we've noted in past videos, this point here, this point here, and this point here, similar to this point here, and this point here looks significantly different from the tepid bounce and failure near the 200 week in the dot-com bust bear market. And the same thing can be said for this failure in the financial crisis bear market. If we look at the five most similar cases relative to the rate cut analysis that we covered in the opening of the video, here are the days of the first rate cut. 1984, the market made a stand above the 200 week. 
1987, Fed cut rates in October. The market made a stand at an upward sloping 200 week. 1989, Fed cut rates. Market made a stand in 1990 at an upward sloping 200 week. And a Fed rate cut came in July of 1995 after the market made a stand at an upward sloping 200 week. And unlike the 2000 and 2007 cases, the market also righted itself above an upward sloping 200 week in 1998 and the Fed cut rates on September 29th. It's pretty fair to say that all five of these cases look more like 2018 and 2019 relative to the unfavorable look here and the unfavorable look here. It's possible you may have seen this headline or something similar this week. A Morgan Stanley economic indicator just suffered a record collapse. The Morgan Stanley Business Conditions Index is for the most part a sentiment index rather than a traditional economic indicator such as GDP. So how concerned should we be that the index had its largest one month decline and reached the lowest level since December of 2008. Here is the present day plunge, which is very, very similar to this plunge that took place about halfway through calendar year 2010. What happened next in the S&P 500 after the same economic indicator collapsed? The stock market gained 33% in the subsequent months. How concerning is this one month drop here that looks very, very similar to this plunge here that occurred late in 2011. Here's our reading, here's our reading, 2011 mid-year to Q4. Here's the S&P 500 after the same economic indicator collapsed. From the S&P 500 lows in 2011, which occurred in early October, the S&P 500 gained 93.85%. When sentiment gets lopsided in one direction, we know it can be a contrary indicator, which was the case in 2010 and 2011. The article also said that it was the lowest reading since late 2008. So you can make an argument that business sentiment is very, very lopsided here in a similar way to the present day. Was this generally a good time to be buying or selling? Here's the S&P 500 late in 2008 after the lowest reading in the index. Eventually, the S&P 500 righted itself and tacked on very, very impressive gains. If we looked at the level of the index in 2016, we could have said it was the lowest reading since 2008. How concerning in 2016 was the lowest reading since 2008 in the Morgan Stanley Business Conditions Index? Asked in another form, what happened next in the S&P 500 from early 2016? Stocks did extremely well. If we look at all four cases, plunge case number one, plunge case number two, low level reading number one and low level reading number two, lows in the S&P 500 came soon thereafter and the market rallied on average for about 4.6 years and gained 117%, simply telling us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes when business sentiment plunges and gets very, very lopsided. 2019 is a unique year and a unique case, and it will follow its own path. It's also noteworthy if we look at the credit markets in the same four periods. Before we cover this chart, if you knew the world was about to end and somebody said you could own TLT, long-term U.S. Treasury bonds, backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government, or would you prefer 
to have higher risk, higher yielding junk bonds? We know the answer, you would prefer TLT. Let's see, in late 2008 here, we get a close below the weekly Bollinger Band on the JNK TLT ratio. Very, very similar look here in 2010. Similar extended look in 2011. Similar extended look in 2016, which is very, very similar to the look on June 14th, 2019. And in some cases, we have a second bout of fear. We get a close below, 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 a close below on this pullback here, close below, close below, and somewhat of a scare moving in that direction. And very, very similar to the four periods where something odd happened relative to business sentiment after these lopsided and extended readings in JNK TLT, for the most part, good things happened in the S&P 500 index. Talked about credit spreads last week. This week, better, worse, or about the same? They've narrowed. The answer is better. Is there anything else that tells us we should remain open to? We're not forecasting anything here. Anything else that says we should remain open to better than expected outcomes looking out one to six years. It's a chart of the global Dow. It's a daily chart dated June 13th, 2019. Resistance in 2007, resistance in 2014, same basic level acted as resistance in 2015. We know what once acted as resistance may now act as support. Late last year, the global Dow came back and retested basically this level and this level, and thus far has held. The current pullback came back and for the most part retested this level here and thus far has held. We'll learn something either way here. We're either going to hold above the blue line and or hold above the orange line, or we're going to give them back. Facts that we have in hand right now tell us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes. What once acted as resistance now appears to be acting as support. If we put a 200 day moving average on the chart, we can see a pattern emerge. Sharp rally followed by consolidation. 200 day moving average tries to turn up Price recaptures it and good things happen. Similar situation here, and you can argue that we've got a very long-term period of consolidation. Price recaptures the 200 day in red. It eventually turns up and good things happen in the global Dow. The rally is followed by more consolidation. Eventually the market recaptures the 200 day and it turns up and good things happen. We've got a similar situation trying to evolve in the present day. Like everything else that we've covered in this video, not using it to forecast, but we'll learn something either way. The fact that the global Dow has recaptured the 200 day moving average tells us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes. And fractals tell us that the concept of the market needing to consolidate its gains applies to longer term periods as well. The market needs to consolidate its gains. You can make an argument this is a long term period of consolidation. Look at the 200 day moving average. This period here really doesn't look anything like this period marked by a strong trend. The market needs to consolidate its gains. And if we remove price, it's a little bit easier to see. The market rallies, consolidates. It's possible that we're going to rally again with the bullish breakout in the 200 day moving average. We can also see a subtle but discernible change on this chart. Let's look at the slope of this decline and the slope of these declines relative to the more recent decline. If we compare the fear and the slope of this decline 
to the present day, you can see we have some improvement. And if we compare the present day relative to this sharp sell-off, we can also see subtle improvement. The same concepts can be seen looking at the 200-day moving average in isolation. Here's the first decline, the second decline, the third decline, and the most recent decline, illustrating how the battle between bullish and bearish conviction, how it can evolve over time. Is there anything else on this chart that tells us to keep an open mind about much better than expected outcomes? You can make an argument that this is a cup and handle pattern here with a bullish breakout. From stockcharts.com, the cup with handle is a bullish continuation pattern that marks a consolidation period followed by a breakout. What is a continuation pattern? It basically says bullish trend. The market needs to digest or consolidate its gains before it continues the trend, which in this case was bullish. Notice in the definition, the consolidation pattern is followed by a breakout. Here's our consolidation pattern. Here's our breakout. In terms of human psychology, the concepts are very, very similar with an ascending triangle pattern, which is also a bullish formation that usually forms during an uptrend. Here's your uptrend and it forms as a continuation pattern telling us to keep an open mind about this trend continuing after the bullish breakout. And we've just shown there's a lot to like about the chart of the global Dow from a long-term perspective. That doesn't necessarily mean the market is telling us that global stocks are the best place to be. S&P 500 relative to the global Dow monthly chart 2003 here, you can see the trend clearly favors the S&P 500 on June 14th, 2019. And you can make an argument that we can also find a cup and handle pattern on this chart telling us to keep an open mind about a bullish breakout in the S&P 500 relative to global stocks. It's also more constructive if the rim of the coffee cup or teacup is upward sloping. Very, very similar to a neckline in a head and shoulders or inverse head and shoulders pattern. Can't emphasize enough here, no forecasting. We're using hard data from the present day to help us assess the probability of good things happening relative to the probability of bad things happening. This is what the hard data looks like in June of 2019. This is what the hard data looks like in June of 2019, telling us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes. We have to acknowledge that we still have a ton of uncertainty related to trade and tariffs. It's extremely important that we maintain maximum flexibility going forward. Our flexible and open mind speaks to an uncertain future and really has very little to do with assessing the hard data that's in front of us. It applies to the fact that we know the data can change. So instead of having a bullish breakout, it's well within the realm of reason that we could get a failed bullish breakout. But given what we know today, the weight of the evidence favors this type of outcome. We continue to take it day by day, assessing the new data as it becomes available. It may also be worth a visit to the new website to see the FAQs. We've got new and expanded FAQs covering traditional investing, low cost passive investing, and the online slash robo strategies that are currently in vogue. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice 
and Shivaco Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.